started. Okay. All right. You are live. Hello, friends, and welcome to Wine Wednesday. My two friends this week were supposed to join me last week, um, but I think sick and stuck. So, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, last week was like a little snowy, so we just kind of improvised with the people we had here. So Kyle and I got to drink a little bit more, so it was a lot of fun. But these two ladies are probably not necessarily winos. So, um, as my grandpa used to call drunk people all the time, he's like, that guy's a wino, which meant he was an alcoholic, but they just called him winos back in the day. I don't know why. My grandpa was weird. <laughs> so, I've, I've gotten a couple of wines that are a little bit sweeter. So, I got them um, a nice Moscato. Nice. And a lovely Riesling. And so, I think, because I know you'll like this one, let's start with the Riesling. Okay, okay. so you guys good for that? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Megan, Kate, Lou. My cup says, when in doubt, drink more wine. And these are plastic because I can't be trusted to. Oh, wait, you get that one. This one's actually mine. I get the glass of cheese. You can't be trusted. Actually, this is Shasta's, but she do not drink wine. It has an S on it, a little rose gold S. I don't even know like why she has this thing. She must have thought she was going to try wine. Is the wine bottle just right, Kate's face? No. We're good? All right. Cool. Everybody's face is beautiful. It? Yeah. Okay. Of course. Cheers. Cheers. Let's see well, how it is. Don't you love it? That is mm. nice. Isn't it's it? refreshing. Oh, it is good. It is a good wine. Um, Crisp. This is probably other audio. I have it right here. I need you to check. Okay. We can take Christine. Okay. You can't have her. <laughs> So sometimes it doesn't matter if the studio door is shut. They will just walk the hell in. Oh, you want it in here? Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> so she has to let us know if our audio is not right, and if that, then we'll take Christine up and talk to her for okay. like past the microphone. But hopefully it's good. She'll check and make sure. So um, we like doing this every Wednesday. I have some random questions that we're going to talk about. Um, we at SCP Agency do social media marketing. I'm going to do so because you need to hear this part. We do social media marketing for auto dealerships and Megan um, runs our creative team, our calendar creators. And this one is in charge of catching any mistakes before they get live. Whenever you have humans that work for you, um, mistakes are going to happen. You know it at the dealership level, you know it at the vendor level, you know it's going to happen. Anytime a, a human has an opportunity to touch something, there's an opportunity for a mistake, whether it's a typo, or it's grammar, or it's spelling, or it's the wrong URL, or the image doesn't match what the text is. I mean, there's just that option. So Kate is that stopgap for us to go, I don't know about this, but this doesn't seem right to me. Mm -hmm. And so besides the fact that it's gone through probably two or three other people before that, Kate is the last line of defense um, before stuff gets posted. So um, if it makes it past her, I'm befuddled, honestly. I'm just a good restaurant. Maybe I know, I'm work. just like, <laughs> what the crap, what? man? <laughs> what what crap's not my go-to word. Sound is good. Yay! That's because I'm wearing the mic. Well, this cheers to that. Cheers, cheers to good audio this week. Oh, my Lord. Okay. So when each of us are going to speak, I'm just going to hand it to you and just hold it. That way it's going to pick up your audio when you're answering. So I just want to make sure. Nobody wants to try to listen to what the hell we're saying. Okay. So this week I, had, I specifically designed a couple of questions that I wanted to talk about. And um, I'm going to start on the bottom first. So um, what question are you always asked that offends or upsets you? And we're going to start with Kate first. Tell everybody, hey. Well, hello. <laughs> I'm Kate. Um, I think that a question that I, I wouldn't say necessarily I'm super offended by it because I'm 30 and I've had to put my big girl panties on and, you know, I get it's not new anymore, um, is the uh, tall related questions. Uh, I can you see know, that. like, so did you play basketball? How <laughs> tall are you? I'm six foot, six foot one right now. Nice. Yes. So, um, yeah, I mean, I played it for a while, but I realized just because I was tall didn't mean that I had to, like, that you had talent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was a better double dribbler than I was. So, and that's what we're doing. Now. And, you know, you know, I have a 
have my purpose now. I get things off the top shelf and for whatnot. sure, people like me for sure. Yeah, um, so that's kind of something that's probably more annoying um, when it's from a younger person. I don't usually. I'm not usually as annoyed, but if it's somebody that younger, I like what, like twenty eight or like mm, ten? No, maybe more around ten. Okay, <laughs> but. I, I feel like somebody that's a mature adult and I expect them to, I mean, I don't ask them about what they did because they're short, so. What would they have done? Would you juggle them at Sucker? Would you stop <laughs> the bottom rows of the Walmart shelves? I don't know. Like, it's probably the same things I did because I was tall, you know? Yeah. Different. Megan, things. what do you think? Um, so, for me, not that it offending me or upsets me but it's continuous but um my husband and I decided not to have children it's not the direction we wanted to go in life and you get over the question of when you guys gonna have kids because we've been married for three years now it's the question of well why not so it's like not it's like back to back like yeah. okay well that my answer wasn't good enough for you let's try again so it's just at times it can be upsetting because I have to like prove my point or make my defense of this is why we don't want to have children of our own. We want to travel, see the world. I don't know all the all the reasons I want to have. I want to have a herd of dogs. I don't know. <laughs> Less drama. Who, who knows? We're definitely both in that same situation because we're both bonus moms. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just, it's. I don't feel like anybody owes you an explanation for whether or not you're going to have a family. I deal with the same thing. Right. So I have some friends that are in the same situation, and whether they can't or they've chosen not to, and um, I told them, I said, I think the problem is that you haven't established that boundary yet, and if you just do it one time, word will spread. Right? And so, like, when they ask you, like, why aren't you having kids? Why are you guys decided not to have kids? All you have to do is go... Oh my gosh, that's such for you because I'm editing it for you. Because if it was me, I'd say it totally different. That's <laughs> such an interesting question, and I'm not comfortable discussing it with you. Gotcha. And then smile and pat them on the shoulder and walk the hell away. You're special. Yep. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. and then they will tell everybody, and then it'll get to the point where nobody asks you that anymore because they can't take the sting of the boundaries. Yes, don't bring that up with her. Yeah, sure. don't ask them about <laughs> that. <laughs> it's the truth. I'm telling you, it'll only happen. It'll only happen one, one or two times, and then you'll be done with it. Shasta says she, you can hear without passing the mic. So, oh, nice. yep. Yeah. 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 We'll talk yeah. a little rope clip right here then. It <laughs> 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 has a little pincher on it. All right. <laughs> so then, are you guys easily offended? I don't think so. I'm an easy overthinker, but not an over, like overthinker. Like when people say something to you, do they later go back home and like dwell on what they've said to you and like try to overanalyze what they've said and what it means? Mm, I could be guilty Often, yes. about it. Yeah. But I don't think I'm like, I don't, I don't let it bog me down so much. It's just like, you know, there's, I feel like there's more certain people, specific mm -hmm. people in my life that if they say something that's touchy, it's going to affect me differently. But the general population in my life is not going to offend me right. very well. Yeah. So I'm not super, I'm not easily offended at all. I think that taking offense is a choice. That even that phrase, take offense, this an action, right? You're taking it. You're choosing to be offended mm -hmm. by the words that some idiot said. And you know, if I call them an idiot, then they they choose to be offended by those words. But um, so I'm always really conscious to. Um, I'm not even really conscious about it because I'm just, it's so hard to offend me. Like you really kind of have to try. And then I have to, I have to agree to play in this world <laughs> with you and then to be offended and then to play the stupid game. And I don't have time for most of, I don't have time for most fools. So offense to me is a total waste of energy. And um, it's even a waste of my, my brain matter to have to even worry about whether something they said affects my world because nobody's crawling in my casket at, casket at the end of the day and only one dude helps me pay rent and he does not offend me. So that's just where I stand on that. Mm -hmm. Like offense is stupid. Yeah. It's just stupid. Do we need more wine? Come right here. Hiya. Um, Kyla says, these are my people. Hey y'all. Hey, hey girl. girl. And We're supposed to save her some of this. So oh. save her some <laughs> of that little bottom of the I'm else. saving you a shot. <laughs> Emily Huckstep says chug, chug, chug. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're chugging. It is really good. 
And Shasta says, same here, y'all. If you like this Riesling, um, also a Peace Porter is really nice, they're German, uh, mm -hmm. or a Gerwitschte um, mm -hmm. They kind of are in the same family, and they're sweet but not over <coughs> sweet, not blue. Um, and they're just a nice wine. They have a nice wine cellar, so I thought you guys would like it. I can never say it. I always say, pick up the Gerwitschte. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you like the yeah. And it may not be stuff, like, but that's how it looks to me, so that's how I say it. I bet Nobody you know. Yeah. 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 It is not that. It's not that. It's going to be a German you. calling me later. I will take you to that aisle. <laughs> yeah. I know what it looks like. Yeah, I love, I love, uh, I love a peace porter too. It's a, it's probably a little bit less sweet. But she has to pick this one for y'all. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So moving along down our list. Of questions, what Megan still amazes you? Um, many things. No, um, I think my um, major one is, you know, when I I constantly am thinking where I want to travel next, what do I want to see next, and it amazes me when people have no desire to go to see, Web City to do things or see things. <laughs> they wouldn't go to Web City Walmart. Yeah, but somehow Walmart. Like, that's too far. Like, <laughs> why? It just amazes me. Some people in their very small boxes, I guess. Yeah, it makes me sad. Well, I think, <laughs> and you know, when I think about that, when I think about people like that, mm -hmm. I think that nobody ever made that a possibility in their mind that True. they could go anywhere. And so, in their mind, that self limiting belief is that's not for people like me. Mm -hmm. Travel is that's for like those thing. people. And it's just a self limiting belief that they have. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is amazing that um, with all technology and being able to have whatever data at your fingernip, fingernips, your fingernips. <laughs> It's hard to believe this is our first class. Um, yeah, is is that they would not even be willing to like look and go, what does it take for me to go to like let's be simple, Mexico. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how affordable is that? I think I could go to Mexico. What happens there? So, I don't know. What about you, Kate? I think what amazes me, and it's something that's kind of like fed into my New Year's resolution, is that I'm a natural stressor. Mm. So, um, my you family... You seem so chill. I don't even get that. Well, my family used to call me Panic Attack Patty. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I'd be like, I can't find my binder. And they're like, you have no responsibility. Stop it. You know yeah. it was a trapper keeper. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that phrase. That's, that's cool. It's a trapper keeper. Um, but, you know, I think something that I've come to this conclusion with is no matter how critical a situation is, I can think about it and I can stress about it and I can try to think about how I need to get to that solution and that's all great because you know it's good to proper prior plan but half the time it's not gonna end up that you know way. the whole phrase yeah. so just say the whole phrase proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance yes. that's my <laughs> I, knew she had it. I knew she had it but hey, Kyla if yeah. you're out there in the hallway there I think there's another wine glass in the cabinet if you want to come in and take your sip you can just saying. make your presence yeah um so for me um what still amazes me and if you look through my camera roll you'd be able to see what still amazes me and every time i go on vacation somewhere like i probably take 700 beach photos and when i go to costa rica i take 700 of the same beach every time that i already have 700 in my camera i can't stop myself because it's so pretty, mm -hmm. the sunset mm -hmm. going down at the beach is just the most amazing visual that God ever created. Mm -hmm. It's just, I the beach. Um, like, I just can't stop myself. And it amazes me every time. I just have to stop and watch it every time. Watch it. I don't even care. Like, sometimes in Costa Rica, it's uh, it'll be rainy, right? But then it seems like about the time the sun sets, that the clouds are here, but then there's a window of the sun falling down below them before it, like, sinks into the ocean. Mm -hmm. And you can see that, but um, it's just, give me here. Carla's hey, bringing her glass. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I heard you calling. I'm like, I'm she's ready. like, there's wine in the house. Yay, thanks, guys. You're welcome. I enjoy. All right, bye, girl. Hi, 
So that's probably what still amazes me. There's a lot of things in life that still amaze me on the stupid factor, but on the just stop me in my tracks and I just, you know, and I just stop and just observe something and go, that's amazing. That's always amazing. So, okay. You guys should have been drinking while I was talking because I'm getting ready to drink the next bottle, which is the Moscato Provincia di Pabla. It's from Italia. Beautiful. Now this got a little sparkle in it. Oh, pretty. Yay. Won't do you like I did all of Garden Guy with the cheese. <laughs> Keep going. More, more, more. I'll tell you what I've done. It's like the birds on, uh, on uh, Finding Nemo. Mine, 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 mine. Okay. So, um, do you guys listen? Do you guys still in your vehicles listen to local radio? We have the questions up here, so if you see us looking up, I'll like take them up there for everybody to see. So, do you guys still listen like to local radio stations, or you stream music when you're in your car? I'm probably more of a streamer, but I still. Ew, it's a little exciting in your mouth, isn't it? Did you sip it? It's a little bubble. It's I great. get talking. It's you know. great. It's very refreshing. Ooh. Okay. I'm more of a streamer. Um, I think if I'm short distances, if my phone's not going to automatically connect, then I'm like totally down for local radio and you know, I don't want that to disappear. But I just have this huge like interest in different genres of music and podcasts. And I just feel like technology has totally gone our direction mm -hmm. to be so able too. to enjoy those things. And heck, I'm cheap. So if we pay for it, you gotta use, use it. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. same here. What streaming. Do you pay for? Streaming? Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, I use Apple Music. Ah, I've gone back and forth since um, Google Music Play sold out to YouTube Music. I lost my playlist. So I took screenshots of them. So then I added them to Amazon Music. I just need to go ahead and do Apple. Mm -hmm. Okay, suggested. <laughs> vehicle with me. I pretty much ride in silence um, all the time. If it's not in silence, then it is either a podcast or an audiobook. And when I get into a car, and it's stupid, it super annoys people because when I get into a car and there's music playing and I'm like starting to talk to them, I'm like just turning the radio off because I can't form a thought with chaos. And the radio stations to me are mostly just chaos. <laughs> so whatever stupid song that I didn't pick, you know, that I don't even like, I don't even know who it is, they won't even tell me. It's not like karaoke where you can read the words on your dash. And sing along. <laughs> I would be dangerous. <laughs> like if there was just go on the windshield in front while you're driving along and you could sing along with the song, then I would probably be okay with that. I probably just did. Yeah, it's windshield karaoke. No day. <laughs> no day. <laughs> Don't steal it from me, people. What's his name that does the car karaoke? James Corden. Yeah. Keep yeah. that in mind, James. Yeah, James. It's windshield James. karaoke. Get it, James. Get it, fella. Um, so yeah, so I don't have any streaming service. I don't subscribe to any of them, and I don't even know what the local radio stations are anymore. Okay, but they haven't changed. Okay, then there's yeah. still oh, a little bit. I don't listen to any of them. Kyla says, Kyla says her wine is delicious as well. Yeah, I saved her the bottom of the best bottle. Is really refreshing. It's very it is. crisp. Mm -hmm. Nice if you really go with a couple peach slices slipped in there, Ooh, frozen one. yeah, wouldn't that be great? Oh, so good. Yeah, I gotta keep some frozen fruit in there because Brian loves Moscato, but like last night I, I had I I didn't have his in the refrigerator. It was just up in the cabinet, and he was just like, "Do I have any wine?" And I'm like, yeah, "It's in the cabinet." And he's like, "So he's gonna put an ice cube in there." But if oh, I, I and I had oh, some, so I had some frozen. I know, <laughs> and he did it. Um, <laughs> Um, but I have like I have um, these big old fatty frozen blueberries. Like they were real blueberries, and then they were starting to get a little aged. And I knew I wasn't gonna get around to using them, so well, that'd be good. I threw them in the freezer. So those are the things I think are the children's wine for. There's a lot of people that freeze grapes to put in those. Ah, that would be a good idea too. Mm. Yeah, that would be good. Grapes and wine. Mm -hmm. You're a thinker. Sure. You're a thinker, you Kate. You can even um, freeze like leftover wine if there's ever any leftover oh, wine. Oh, yeah. Hell, it's I know. I put them in the <laughs> ice cube tray. It's a foreign thing called leftover wine. So I put it in an ice cube tray and then save it for when you have. 
So we had some, um, so instead of doing um, champagne for New Year's Day, I bought some uh, Prosecco. And um, Brian had never tried it before, and so then we didn't drink it. We were drinking a whole bunch of other stuff on New Year's Eve. And so on New Year's Day, we didn't want no more alcohol. But then the next day was, was it a weekend? Was it a Saturday or mm -hmm. Sunday? Whatever day it was. Saturday. And so he's like, we still have this Prosecco. Do we want mimosas? And I'm like, yes. why, yes, we do. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so there was some left. And so you know, like the little, um, so for like cork, for um, sparkling cork stuff, they got the big fat cork and then the thing that, the cage that goes mm -hmm. on it to hold it all down. And so you can never get the cork back in there. No. So he just put the metal thing on and screwed it back down again. And so the next morning, he's like, I think we still have some stuff for um, mimosas if you want some more. I'm like, all right, whatever. And then there was like this much left in the bottle. And he's like, what are we going to do with that? I'm like, <laughs> I'm not throwing away an empty bottle. No. I will tell you, if you take like some Tessin steel and then you put it right over the top and then you put a rubber band, it helps a lot. Um, so somebody bought me, and they're in my, um, my, um, computer case out there my cousin Angie and Mike brought me bought me for Christmas they're called wine condoms oh. and they even come in a little condom wrapper or whatever to say drinking. yes it's a, yes <laughs> <laughs> nice job I haven't tried them yet because they I, I forgot that they were there and I didn't know that there was only that much left in that bottle oh. I would have um, but they look just like little condoms oh, but they, nice. they fit this <laughs> <laughs> Like that. I don't like, know nobody how look that at me works. while I'm putting this on here. <laughs> yeah. Brian, come on. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll give those a test. It's a whole box of them. Little wine condoms. I love it. So, all right, next question. Kate. Okay. <clears throat> if you were to save the world, no, just kidding. Um, what do you believe is your greatest contribution to society? Um I I think what I do well for other people, just like you and Chris, is that I've noticed growing up that we don't have a lot of empaths in our world. So um, you don't necessarily have to know what somebody is exactly going through, but you know what it feels like to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. You know what it feels like to be heartbroken. You know what it feels like to feel rejected or excited or rewarded, whatever it may be. And you should share those experiences with other people. If you come to me and you're like, you know, somebody ran over my pet mouse or something like that. <laughs> and I know that that mouse means everything to you. I'm going to be sad for you. Like, Are you going to go, oh, are you going to make that sound? Yeah, maybe. Okay. But I mean, I would, be sad sad, I would be sad for you because yeah. that that meant everything to you, and you know I know that's probably a dumb example, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I, know. I, I get the whole point. And and the, and the opposite side of that is I always tell people that I'm not naturally empathetic, and so I can always tell. Here, I said that because I can always tell when I'm around an empath, because when you when I would when someone will tell you a story, their first response will be, oh, it'll be that. And I'll go, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. cool. totally. So that would be the point whenever I probably should have went, oh. But I, I don't because I like, I'm still listening to the story. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling the pain behind it. I'm still just like engrossed in what the story is that you're telling me that's going on and not the, oh my gosh, that must have been hard for you. Yeah. Like, that never comes to my mind. I just don't like people to feel like they're alone in their situation. I don't want them to be either, but it doesn't naturally come to me to go, oh, I should probably oh, reach out no, and touch sure. them at this moment. No. I, mean, I, I, think, I think that's a little far for me. I'm not much of a toucher. <laughs> but, you know, like, oh, she touches. She, <laughs> but she is an empath, too. Okay. Oh, I, I will tell her stories, <laughs> and she's like, hooray! Like... Well, that, that's like my answer. I'm a constant ray of sunshine. Yeah. But not in, a, yes, you are. not in a gay, cheesy way, but I have a zillion reasons to be a daily Debbie Downer, and I <laughs> am not. Mm -hmm. And I will subconsciously sometimes brighten your day. Yeah. How <laughs> awful would it be, though, if there's a whole office full of just me? You know oh my no, gosh. Seriously. <laughs> no seriously wonderful. like I'm just like I'm like blunt and to the point and then like looks at me and stuff and like huh and then I may just turn and walk away and not even say anything about the whole conversation we just had 
because my brain went in another direction and I just left. You close it off. Yeah, I'm like, okay, there. And, but then these people are the good ones because they're like sitting there and they're going to feel the story all the way to the end and they're going to say all the appropriate things to you. And I'm like, oh, thank God they're in there with them. Yeah. <laughs> it's also why we're Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. true. Mm-hmm. You can get but you're creative. Extreme. I'm creative. You are. Uh, no, I have creative ideas. I don't like to implement them. Yeah. Like it takes a lot of work. I am, <clears throat> in our EOS stuff, I am the visionary which means I think of all of this shit. And then I go, I throw it over my shoulder and go, somebody needs to check that stuff out. And hopefully there's a whole bunch of people behind me to catch the crap that I show, because it's a lot. I throw a lot all the time. What about this? I, I put a lot on Kyla. And she'll take tell a me, sip of your wine. <laughs> yeah. Drink, drink. Um, she will tell me when she's like, I'm not gonna get to that. And, and I appreciate that direct communication other than, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. And then, you know, then I have a husband calling me going, she needs a mental health day. I'm like, why does she keep saying yes? Like, that doesn't make me happy that you say yes. It makes me happy that you tell me when you're at capacity. Mental health day. <laughs> Things happen. That's literally all you have to say. <laughs> yeah, that or diarrhea. <laughs> Can't prove either one. Mind. No. Cannot prove either one. Never prove me. <laughs> okay, so Megan, what do you think that um, your greatest contribution to society is? My rage fund. You do? I do think. I think so. I mean, I'm a constant optimist, and um, I refuse. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have. I'll have my bad days like anyone else. But I've seen you cry. I cry on Zoom. Kyla, Kyla, Kyla. Kyla. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, Megan goes like this, we're all this thing, and Megan just takes your computer and goes, turn. <laughs> Nobody can see me anymore, and I'm like, shit, Megan's crying. I was a very, <laughs> I just, I was very smooth about it, too. <laughs> it's not funny. I didn't, like, funny. close it. But, um, yeah, so I just feel like I can <laughs> just breeze past that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that didn't happen. Meanwhile, um, no, I just feel like um, just my optimism is probably, I feel like I can, not that I'm out to try to brighten everyone's day on purpose. Um, Do I hurt your feelings a lot? Well, maybe for a second. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't cry. <laughs> oh, my God. Help her, Kate. Help her. Oh, oh, don't worry. I'm the one that's in there like, listen, get it together. It's okay. <laughs> You're overthinking this. I'm a good overthinker. Move on. Yeah. Yeah, you got to keep trucking. I used to take, be that way. You just have to take the words mm -hmm. and go, what can I learn from them? And don't stab yourself with them. They're not a personal attack. They're mm -hmm. just business. Because I don't have feelings about business. Well, the way you explained it to me last week, you're kicking me up the ladder. Right. Not trying to kick me down. And that's oh, what yeah, I absolutely. needed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it wasn't like you ever thought you'd kick me oh, down. No. But just... When I quit investing with you, you need to cry. <laughs> that's the day to cry. That's the just day. Not today. The day that I'm like, yeah, anyway, I don't need to talk to you. We're done. I'm not like that, but... I'll have Beverly talk to you at that point. <laughs> oh, Beverly's going to be calling you in a minute. Then you should be scared. <laughs> oh, Bev. Uh, she's like, shit, why do I got to call? <laughs> so you'll have to know. So um, we kind of make Beverly our henchman. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just that um, I have to I have to keep a, uh, a boundary between me and the employees, meaning... I don't fire anybody. Beverly fires everybody. That's Beverly's job, not my job. It's my job to help you grow and to help you get to the next level and to help you do everything that you can to succeed. And when that's not possible, when you're not gonna reach your potential, whatever, I don't need the rest of the employees here thinking, oh my God, Robin's gonna fire me. They need to be worried, oh my God, Beverly's gonna fire me. <laughs> and so when COVID hit, we had to lay Megan off. And I told Beverly, I'm like, you need to call Megan and do blah, blah, And she's like, oh, my God, not Megan. <laughs> <laughs> she's the nicest person in the world. So she Poor calls Beverly. She calls me after, and she's like, that was horrible. <laughs> that was horrible. She cried. I think I cried. I don't even she know. Cry. And so I was like, Aww. there's nothing we can do about it. It's just what oh, it is right all. now. Bye, all. Aww. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even hear it. Um, <laughs> and so then when it was time to call you to come back to work, and um, I'm like, all right, well, I'll give Megan a call. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. You had to call her to lay her off. You get to call mm -hmm. her and give her a job back. And she's like, yay! She was so excited. It was the best job. <laughs> it was. 
She was like, I'm like, I, 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 I think. think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. High and low. And, yeah, you know. absolutely. Great. Yeah. Reach to that. Mm -hmm. she, re she remembers those feelings. Yeah. yeah. 2020 was rough for everybody, not just, whew, not just everybody out there, people inside here too. We pivoted and then pivoted back. Listen, so. 2020 brought me here. Yeah. So that's exciting. It was just a small, it's a small, like little window of, <clears throat> and then we just regrouped. So. so when I think about what do I believe is my greatest contribution to society, it's not going to be what any of you think it is. So people will probably think, oh, that she runs SCP and she's creating jobs and she's doing these things. <clears throat> it's not. Um, the fact that I have raised five amazing adults that are contributing factors to society <clears throat> who are in happy, healthy, loving relationships and um, that are respectful to their elders and everybody else around them and that I can go to a Chiefs game with and not be embarrassed or we can just hang and chill at the house and um, that they love me and that I love who they turned out to be. That is my greatest contribution to society is the adult humans that I've put into the world and you guys are all fucking welcome for that because they are all amazing people. I have people call me when they were in high school and go, oh my gosh, Sawyer and Dallas are so amazing. They're juniors and seniors and they're picking up the um, lower classmen, the freshmen and sophomores and bringing them to practice because they don't have a ride so the parents won't have to get out and do that thing. And I have parents calling me all the time um, about my kids telling me um, how thrilled they were to have them be friends of their kids. Um, and then sometimes that doesn't translate, right? Kids grow up and when they get that free will and they start making their own decisions, that's when what you've taught them starts to show or not show. And if you've taught them with integrity, um, and if you've led that same kind of life going, this is the example I'm leading for you, then they will pick it up. This, this wine makes a little burpy, so. Bubbly. bubbly, very bubbly. It gets a little bubble to the throat. <laughs> so, um, then that's when you know that what, everything that you've said to them will either have stuck or didn't stick and that you've had an impact on their life and the decisions that they make, <clears throat> their goals and their dreams are all evidence of what you invested in them for all of those damn years mm -hmm. because it's an investment. So as bonus moms, you need to know that that will be your greatest contribution to society also. So um, Brian is Shasta's stepdad and I am Brent's stepmom, and we I didn't invest any less in Brent, and Brian didn't invest any less in Shasta than he did in his own. And so um, I consider them all mine, he considers them all his, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if you're a step-parent or not, your contribution is so important, and don't discount it because you're not the real parent. I can tell you the real parent didn't contribute much. I'm just gonna tell you I am a real parent, <laughs> exactly Me too. because yeah. my step I mean I've been in my stepkids life for a really long time I mean ever I mean I was helping make sure that the boys I mean twins three-year-olds I've never had a biological child and I'm like holy crap and literally because it was potty training time and I was putting every bit of energy I'd cry in the bathroom and Shay was like I my husband I would call him and he's at work and he you're fine I know you can do it you're, you're okay. You're okay. Just cry for a minute and you'll be fine. They'll go to sleep and you can come out, you know? And, and I did the, you know, I was strong enough to do this. But now we're to a point with them that, you know, I sent them to uh, my mom's house. My mom's their nanny and they don't know any different. And my sister told me the other day, she goes, the kids were just so awesome on New Year's Eve. They helped cook food, they helped do everything. Like, they didn't complain, they were just awesome. And Christine's getting distracted by Clubhouse. Shh, stop was, it. They were respectful, and you know, I told them that, and they're like, oh, no big deal. And I was like, you it guys are growing deal. up to be yeah. just awesome people. Yeah. Like, I didn't have to be there and give you the look, but you know, you did. They just, they just did what they needed to do because they're turning out to be awesome people. Yeah, that's awesome. My, my stepdaughters are teenagers, and so I'm not afraid of the drama. So I'm like, let's just do this. <laughs> can't be. And they're surprised at the things I come up with, different groundings. Like, I'll make you watch Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> like, oh, that's my grounding. I'll take away your leggings. But, I mean, it's just it's weird. I was talking to Shasta <laughs> earlier, and she was just talking about patience in the bathroom. 
habits, and I'm like, just make her wear her underwear yeah. just around her neck then, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, how long would that take before she starts actually wiping like a nine-year-old? I, <laughs> like, I made the kids watch the Pursuit of Happiness last summer. Oh, I love that movie. I made them sit down I and watch. I did the noise, did you hear it? <laughs> you did. Oh, yes, you did. Running and evolving <laughs> into an empath. I love Will Smith. <laughs> but I made them, like, they were like, uh, the whole situation was, there's nothing we can watch. Well, we have Hulu, we have Netflix, which I loved your message about like not subscribing to everything you don't use. Oh, but gosh, we have Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, everything you can imagine. And they're like, there's just nothing to watch. Oh my lord! And I, or, to watch. I don't have anything to wear. And I was just hearing all these little things in one day. And I said, all right, we're all sitting down. We're watching the pursuit of happiness. And by the end of the movie, they're all like, like our life's wonderful. Like, yeah, we didn't have to Somebody keep it on one basketball in yeah. the bathroom of the subway. Yeah. And you know, at the end of that movie, it's horrible. him and his son are walking down the street in Chicago or in uh, San Francisco, mm -hmm. and the guy, the real Moving guy, up. the <laughs> real guy is crossing. He's in the movie. He's crossing this that. way. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The real Chris. I forget his last name. Oh, that's a good question. Chris Garner. Yeah, it's super cool. It's very, very. <clears throat> okay, last question. You know why? Because we're out of wine. <laughs> um, so she is. If, oh yeah. I have a little bit. God dang. <laughs> um, so if you had your choice to go to a vineyard or a brewery, mm. where would you go? Vineyard. Absolutely. I, so it's like a lot of wine peaks and stuff, not like this though. Oh. Like Chardonnays and. There's Merlot. some stuff that you're like, ooh, my mouth fuzzy. Mouth fuzzy mouth. <laughs> Fuzzy mouth. Fuzzy mouth. <laughs> I I would shock you, Robin. I like to drink wine that's as dry as my soul. Nice. <laughs> I mean, so I do um, too. I, I'm pretty I like big. All the flavors. I'm pretty big on vineyards because I think they're beautiful too. They so beautiful. they're like uh, my dad was raised in the Erie PA area, so when we go up there in the summers, there's just vineyards everywhere. Um I see mean, my mind doesn't think of that for Erie PA. Oh, it's everywhere. Huh. It's everywhere. Um, so I really like wine, and I like pretty, oh, sure. like you were yeah. talking about the beach. But um, I'm a beer drinker. Like the science I love behind these. breweries are like interesting to look at all of the big vats and the shit going on in there. There's my one of my favorite places in mm -hmm. Costa Rica is a brewery, but you walk into this beautiful place. Like this, they built this. I mean, I want to say a million dollar building. When you think about Dominical, Costa Rica, that has nothing but dirt roads, uh, they built this million dollar building. You come into it to mm -hmm. eat, it's all open air, whatever. But when you walk in, you're walking over this plexiglass because the brewery's right there and you get to look down in it. And I'm like, oh, I that's just stand cool. there going, it's so cool down there. I just like, I like beer because you can, I know you can pair a lot of foods and stuff with wine, but there's some really interesting combinations of pairing food with beer. Mm. And I'm like really big into the whole carbonation and fizzy and feeling warm and fuzzy inside. And I'm I can like, start I'm with like something burp. really, really light at the beginning, <laughs> and in the middle, I'll drink something really dark, like a porter, and then mm -hmm. or a stout, and then. Do so you I'm, like getting a flight? You like the flight? Oh, I stuff? love flights. Yeah. yeah. I don't like beer at all. Like there, I if I were dying of thirst, <laughs> <laughs> I probably would just have to die. Like, it's gross. My husband tells every one of his friends that he was friends with when he was in a single stage. He's like that our big beer drinker. It's I don't know if I'm super proud of it yet or not, but he's like, dude, she can drink you under the table in beer, any beer. <laughs> we have um, we have a restaurant. Guinness, that's a beer. Now that's a beer with Ooh. like feet on it. Listen, we have a restaurant and we have some different beers on tap and we have an IPA mm -hmm. and people would ask me well what does it taste like I'm like ran over grapefruit <laughs> I don't know just is it green IPA, ghost IPA, green ghost IPAs are super hoppy they, so. they they're, are and they're I, I, super, not, like, I, I only know that because of talking to my son um I said like, yeah um mm -hmm. I only I don't know it because I taste I don't even know what a hop tastes like so um anywho um, so by it's a vineyard for me also um I, because they're so pretty and I grew up in um, Central California, and we have a lot of produce there, a lot of a lot of grapes there. But they're like the Thompson Hazel grapes, mm -hmm. or the green grapes, or whatever. And so whenever you go up to Northern California and you head up towards Napa, whatever, like it's just there's just nothing there's just nothing more beautiful than it. Like the roads are perfect. Mm 
mm -hmm. and everything is kept nice and tight. There's no weeds. There's no weeds growing up. It's just, it's so pristine and so lovely, and you know what it means. It means a nice warm glass of, oh my gosh, I want some of that. Um, and so I have a Peloton treadmill, and sometimes I don't want to do like the workouts that are in there, mm -hmm. or a live workout or whatever, and so you can choose to just walk or run wherever you want to. And so I got to go through Napa the other day. Oh, so that's yeah, cool. it was like this whole. So somebody I don't know if he I don't know if whoever films it is like actually riding a bike with a GoPro on it, or if he is um, um, using a drone to film all of it. But like they're always on a path, whatever, oh, and they're going somewhere. And so like sometimes at 5 a.m. I'm walking in Tuscany, or sometimes I'm up walking in Napa. And I'm just like, and, but, and it's so weird because when I'm doing the workouts, like there's an instructor that's on the other side of the screen and you're, they're telling me what to do, whatever, everything's fine. When they have the walking, everything's safe at that point. When they have the walking trails, when you're like just watching the thing and you're self moderating yourself, whatever, like I'm like listing to the left, I'm like having to hang on to the thing because we're going around a corner. Like I'm not even kidding you. I'm like, I keep one, like one like hand is right here. Yes. Yeah. Like I get all cattywampus on that thing. And it's like the other day I did one through like um, Costa Rica somewhere and they were going just down this trail through the jungle, whatever. And I'm just like, <laughs> like, and your whole body is like going and down the rocks. the treadmill's not moving. It's just the same. It's just my visual is all screwed up. I'm like, God, thank God nobody's in my face when I can see me. Right? I Brian, I come out limping up. Brian's like, what am I? I think I sprained my ankle. It's like a pause. I don't know what happened. I fell off the treadmill. <laughs> like, I thought it was going down the hill. Oh my God. It's like all turning and nothing moves. Um, yeah, so I just keep myself. Um, and if I found that, so the other day I was like, I had my hand on both the rails while I was walking, whatever, my my Apple Watch wouldn't record my workout. Piece of crap. I was so mad. And so now I have to keep this hand swinging while I hang out with it. <laughs> while I'm walking through an Apple That's hilarious. Two times, and you don't have anybody walking up with your glass of wine. Yeah, right? Like, there was nothing sitting there when I got done setting my little water bottle, whatever. Anyways. Well, this is us wrapping up another session of Wine Wednesday with a Moscato and a Riesling, and um, we'll just determine what next week is going to be. I don't know if Christine's going to be here next Wednesday. If she is, we will make sure that we get her on camera, and we will be sharing some more wine again. She's always a hoot to have on Wine Wednesday. It's a hoot. Oh. <laughs> um, and so, thank you guys. Have a great rest of your week, and uh, peace from SCP Agency. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers with our empty glasses. <laughs>